Hey YouTube, welcome back to a brand new Animal Crossing video. Today we're doing something a little different and taking a look at the evolution of the post office in Animal Crossing. We're going to break down the primary features of this iconic building, talk a bit about the characters and of course compare each version up to and including Animal Crossing New Horizons, covering all of the changes seen over the years. It's definitely going to be a fun one so please drop a like if you're excited and let's get straight into today's video. So all the way back in 2001, Animal Crossing began its debut on the N64 and later that same year was also released on the Nintendo GameCube. This was the start of the incredible journey that is Animal Crossing and set the bar for life sim games. But of course, as the game evolved through the years, each new iteration released introduced more and more changes. So let's take a look. Animal Crossing now one of the most iconic buildings in the original was of course the post office. This is a standalone building that not only offered a variety of different features, but saw a handful of adorable characters running the place, including Pelly, Pete and Phyllis. These guys have a fairly messy side story of their own, but we'll save that for another video. Now just like any building or shop in Animal Crossing, the post office serves a unique purpose in that it allows you to write and send mail to villagers and even other players. Even from the beginning, this was an adorable and wholesome mechanic and is still a feature today. The post office also allows players to store their letters behind the counter, not only giving you the ability to store your favourite, but a way to actually store spare items as if they were presents, giving you some much needed bonus storage space. Of course, Pelly was always happy to do this, whereas Phyllis, not so much. Now the post office was more than a letter sending store as it was also the go to place to manage your money. Back in the original the post office clerk would also help you deposit or withdraw money to and from savings or to manage your loan allowing you to pay back Tom Nook. They never did pass too much judgement if you saved up millions of bells without sending Nook a single one. Anyway, the US release of Animal Crossing and the E Plus version in Japan saw possibly one of the best features in any Animal Crossing post office, and that was the e reader transfer machine that almost looks like the predecessor to the Nook Stop. The ETM, as it was shortened to, allowed players to connect their e reader peripheral to the GameCube using a Game Boy Advance and scan one of 326 Animal Crossing e reader cards. There were a variety of different e reader cards, including character cards that unlocked letters and presents from your favourite villagers town tune cars that updated your town tune to a classic melody, design cars that unlocked iconic patterns and even NES or NES cards that gave players real 100% playable NES games that could be placed in their homes. It was pretty cool. Now other than a working clock that was pretty much everything the post office offered in the original. Still quite a lot of features, some adorable and very entertaining interactions with characters and an iconic building that helped create the immersive atmosphere of Animal Crossing. Wild World. Now sadly, when Wild World came out a few years later on the Nintendo DS, the town's buildings were adjusted and somewhat consolidated. The standalone post office we know and love, the classic Wishing Well Plaza and the surprisingly useful town dump were all removed and replaced with the town hall. Fortunately, Pelly, Pete and Phyllis still had jobs as the post office was fully operational inside the town hall. Although now a single counter rather than a building, it was still the go-to place to mail letters and manage money just like the original. Just like before you could write, send or save letters to players and villagers and of course pay back your loan to Tom Nook if you wanted to. This so called post office in Wild World did offer a couple of new over the counter services though. Now that notes in bottles were a thing you could save those too, especially if you received a strange letter from afar and wanted to keep it to show your friends or maybe just the rare ones Nintendo themselves used to send out. Furthermore, the Wild World Post Office offers ways of donating your hard earned bells to the Boondocks, a small town north of your Wild World village. This was a mechanic and side quest made to make you appreciate your wealth of bells, but also unlock rare feather items whilst helping develop another town. After donating over 3 million bells, the Boondocks would change its name to Boondopolis, which was always pretty satisfying after doing such a good deed. Anyway, given the post office features were mostly restricted to a single counter, that's all they really offered. Although the town hall itself also made use of the recycling box and a place to host annual events. Let's go to the city. 
Now given that Let's Go to the City was basically a rework of Wild World with a few extra bits and pieces here and there, much of the facilities remained the same. Once again, instead of a standalone post office, the mail features were limited to the counter inside the town hall, which was surprising since the Wii version added a huge city area north of the town so it could probably have made room for it. Anyway, despite similarities in how the post office appears and functions, there are some differences. Sadly, the boondocks no longer exist and it's no longer possible to donate bells to the town. We can only assume by the time Let's Go to the City was released that Boondopolis was thriving and didn't need any help. Of course, Pelly and Phyllis would still manage your mail, but the option for saving notes in bottles was removed. And finally, thanks to a new automatic bell dispenser, a self-serving bell point that also happened to be located in the town hall, Pelly and Phyllis's jobs became much easier in that they no longer needed to help you manage your savings and loans. This was all done through the ABD machine instead of over the counter. The good news is the post office in Let's Go to the City did offer a new service, allowing players to post messages and screenshots to other players' Wii message boards, which was pretty unique for Animal Crossing at the time. Of course, just like the town hall in Wild World, the building itself offered many more services, including reporting villagers, but as far as the post office side of things, that's pretty much it, resulting in the facility having much less features than the post office in the original. New Leaf once Animal Crossing New Leaf was released, the post office was finally a standalone building once again and instead of being squeezed into a town hall, had its very own store. For the first time in any Animal Crossing game, the post office was removed from the town completely and was instead relocated to the main street to the north where pretty much all of the other shops and buildings were found including the Able Sisters, Nook's Cranny and of course the museum. Now that the post office was its own entity once again, it became the iconic building it once was. In that way, when you were there, it was for a reason, and not just to use one of the many other non-postal services available in the town hall, which was nice. All the characters still work at the post office at this point, and just as you'd expect, offer a way to write, send and save mail. However, the New Leaf post office saw a new feature that allowed users to receive DLC and exclusive items from Nintendo with a little help from Pelly. Before being adopted by the post office, these were previously distributed through notes in bottles or via P when delivering mail. Now, with the post office once again being its own building, it made sense for the store to take back the responsibility for handling savings and loans. However, the ABD machine, which could now be found back in the post office, was still the point of interest for these transactions, allowing you to feel a little less guilty about hiding millions of bells from Tom Nook. This feature was quite useful though for those who regularly reset their towns as it doubled as a way to transfer your wealth to a new town even though everything was being deleted and reset, which was pretty useful if you wanted to start out again as a rich mayor. Anyway, despite the post office being removed from the town hall, along with some of the services it offers, the town hall still exists in New Leaf, but is more focused around the civic duties and public work projects than anything else. Now, thanks to the post office's building that featured in New Leaf, the post office, the characters and its services were much closer to the original post office than any other game, which was really exciting. New Horizons Now sadly as things stand much like the transition from population growing to wild world, the post office was somewhat consolidated in New Horizons, completely changing how all of the features Pelly and Phyllis once offered are used. It literally went from this awesome standalone building to this. In regards to some of the more obvious features the post office typically handles, all of the bell management, whether that's saving or paying back Nook's loan, is now all done from the Nook Stop, which as you probably know, is an all-in-one shopping app amiibo scanning bank terminal. This machine was once again removed from the post office and made its way back to the resident services, which very closely resembles the town hall from previous games. With bell point services no longer under Pelican management and no longer associated with a post office, that really only leaves the mailing service and the ability to save letters. Of course, we can save and store letters still using our own mailboxes, but in order to write and send letters like you have always been able to, you must now talk to this guy who helps send a letter from a postcard stand, removing the need of a post office. Sadly, Pelly and Phyllis were removed from New Horizons along with the standalone post office, but I'm assuming Pete is still out there somewhere because let's face it, someone is delivering our mail. Anyway, over the years it seems the post office has evolved through the times from sending and saving letters, scanning e-reader cards, paying loans and even donating to the boondocks to a single postcard stand in an airport. 
Even the ability to buy different kinds of paper, which was always a fun side quest, is now lost to Animal Crossing. Unfortunately, because of this, I personally believe the mail system is rarely used and is definitely not as immersive as it once was. With that said, and the fact New Horizons could see new updates, I'm not ruling out a post office being added sometime in the future, but for now, players can still use most of the iconic post office's features, but from either the resident services or the airport. So there we have it, that's pretty much the story of the post office, how the building itself has evolved over the years and what features were available with each iteration. But what do you think about the post office? Are you happy with what it's become or would you like to see Pelly and Phyllis return in the future and bring a standalone post office back to the franchise? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Anyway, for now, that pretty much wraps up this video. If you're an Animal Crossing fan, don't forget to subscribe as I've uploaded a bunch of New Horizons news as and when it happens, as well as new documentary style videos like this in the future. Until then, I'd like to give a special thank you to this channel's Patreon supporters, as well as this channel's members. You guys absolutely rock and truly help me upload as regularly as I do. I couldn't do it without you. Don't forget to head over to our Discord server too. And of course, if you made it to the end of the video, please comment post office just to let me know you did. That would be super awesome. And please be sure to include which post office is your favorite. I'd love to know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it entertaining. Please be sure to leave a like if you did. Thanks for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. Stay safe and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.